Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. So my name is Marco, and I'm working in HA Proxy Technologies, and I wanted to talk to you ab about the HA Proxy Go Packages ecosystem. First, I want to talk about why we even created a Go Packages ecosystem. We created two projects. One of them is the HA Proxy Ingress Controller for Kubernetes, and the other one is the HA Proxy Data Plane API. Both of those projects have been mentioned in talks before today. So I'm the lead developer for the HA Proxy Data Plane API, and most of this presentation is based on it, but I'll mention something about the Ingress Controller too. So we created those two projects so we can easily integrate HA proxy within dynamic environments, an area that is, as we see, growing nowadays. One of the reasons behind choosing Go as a technology behind this, those projects is to expand our already great open source community built around the HA proxy with more Go developers. With that in mind, I would like to invite anyone that has an interest to take a look at the, the projects I will be mentioning at our GitHub and try to comp contribute there. We'll be happy to guide you through the process. So how did we create it, and what technologies did we use? The first project we did was the HA Proxy Data Plane API. And it being a REST API, we chose a language specification to describe our API. Uh, specifically, we chose the Open API 2.0, formerly known as Swagger. Uh, at the time, it was becoming a standard for defining REST APIs, and it had a great tooling support. One of the tools that we used for developing the data plane API is the Go Swagger tool. Go Swagger tool generates most of our useful code, meaning that it generates uh, structs from definitions you create in OpenAPI YAML files. It generates validation functions, server skeleton functions, and much more. Our workflow while implementing it was that we wrote the specification first, meaning that first, when we add a new feature or make a change, first we change everything in the specification. Then we use the specification to generate the code. And finally, we implement the logic for that feature. One of the benefits of using a language to describe your API, specification language to describe your API, is that you can use a wide array of tooling to generate the client code for writing your own apps that will interact with the data plane API. Oh, sorry. So here's an example how you can generate client code library for the data plane API. For the example, I went with uh, Python client code library uh, using the OpenAPI tools, OpenAPI generator. Generating a client code for data plane API is as easy as calling those two commands up there. So basically, you pull their Docker image from the repo, and you run the Docker image with the following command options. What it does, it creates, in the output location you specified, it creates a whole library of Python client code. Uh, it even creates stuff like tests, documentation, readme files, Travis files, and much more. The bottom example is an example of how to add an ACL directive to your HA proxy configuration using the generated client code library in Python. So here we go. This is what this presentation is all about. So uh, I'll walk you through this diagram shortly, and we'll explain each of the projects we have on our GitHub in detail in some of the following slides. This diagram explains how our Go packages interact with each other. So note that this is a logical diagram. Only two projects built as applications are the Ingress Controller and Data Plane API. Rest of the packages are just Go packages used as dependency in those projects. So first, as you see on the bottom left, we have the HA proxy running. And we can interact with it using the HA proxy configuration, changing the configuration and reloading it. And we can interact with it using the runtime API. The runtime API is the stat socket directive or the socket API, however you want to call it. 
So one of the projects we have is the config parser. It's a straight up config parser, as the name says. It just reads and writes HA proxy configuration and stores it in a, in a structured output. The client native uses the configuration parser to parse the configuration, and it uses the stat socket to get some information out of HA proxy, like, like stats, like stick table entries, and it uses the stat socket to reconfigure HA proxy on the fly. What client native does with all of, the, all of that information is that it packages it into the structs that are defined into the models package. And we use those structs to pass information around between client native and the ingress controller or the data plane API. Models is a standalone package. So if you generate your own client code, uh, client code in Go, you can use the models package to interact with the data plane API or to interact directly with the client native. So models and client native packages are the core of both of our Go projects, the data plane API and the ingress controller. It's basically all the server logic of the data plane API extracted from it. So every method on every resource that you have on the data plane API is an exported function in the client native package. We chose to do so, so that we can reuse that server logic in other projects apart from the data plane API. The first project that got to use it internally at, uh, is the Kubernetes ingress controller. And you can use it in your own Go apps to interact with HA proxy if you include the client native package. So the client native, as I said, handles the configuration and the runtime a API. It has features like transaction management, meaning that you can bunch up a lot of changes to the configuration in one transaction and apply it atomically. It has a configuration file versioning. It holds backups of configuration files and much more. The other package is the models package. This package is totally auto-generated using the Go Swagger tool. The Go Swagger tool uses the definitions from the YAML files of the OpenAPI specification, and it generates Go structs from that definitions. Other than those structs, it holds methods for validating those structs, and it holds methods for marshalling and marshalling into the JSON. Yep, the clicker. So here's an example how you can use the client native in your own Go application. Uh, those are who, who is familiar, this is a, a Go source code. So basically, I've skipped the init functions, error, error handling, and much more. You can find all of that into, in the readme on our GitHub projects. In the first example, uh, we get uh, the WW backend from the configuration file using the get backend function. It returns the configuration file version and the instance of the backend. We can then use that backend to, to edit it. In this example, we're adding a stick table line to the backend we fetched and editing it with using the edit backend function. In the second example, we're using the runtime client in the client native. Uh, so we created a stick table in the previous example, and now we can use it in the runtime API to show, to show some information from it. Uh, we, we can use the show table call to describe the table. It gives us the name of the table, the size, the used capacity. And the second call uh, uses uh, the sh get table entries, which returns all of the entries in that stick table. As you can see with those two examples, you can use the client native and models package in your own Go application to monitor stuff uh, on the HA proxy, to monitor statistics, stick table entries, and then you can react to them by changing the configuration in the runtime or in the configuration file in reloading HA proxy. So one of the other packages mentioned was the config parser. The config parser, the configuration, it's just basically the configuration logic extracted from the client native. It, uh, it uh, reads uh, the configuration, and it returns it in a structured output in a predefined order, meaning that um, uh, 
it keeps comments and parts of the configuration too that it doesn't understand, meaning that not all HA proxy directives are yet supported in the config parser or the client native. But don't worry, if you have a running HA proxy config and you pass it to the config parser, it will keep everything, uh, everything that it doesn't understand in it, and, but the resulting file might be different. That's just basically because it uses a predefined ordering. The logic of the execution of the HA proxy should stay the same. The config parser doesn't use transactions. It has no knowledge of configuration files. It basically reads the file you give him and writes to the file you give him. It's independent on our open API specification, and it doesn't use models package. So a lot of overhead is removed from the config parser, and you can also include it in your apps to, if you just want to read or write something to the configuration. In the config parser, we used Go Generate to generate most of the useful code in it. Uh, it's a tool in Go that you can specify some annotations in comments and then use Go Generate to generate Go code. Finally, all of those projects uh, come together in two, two of our applications, the Data Plane API and the Kubernetes Ingress Controller. So Chad talked about Data Plane API in detail. I will give just a quick overview. Even Vincent mentioned our Kubernetes Ingress Controller, so I'm going to glance through these notes here really quickly. The Data Plane API is a REST API for managing HA proxy. It runs as a sidecar, pro sidecar process, and it runs on the same machine as the HA proxy. It handles reloads, uh, so it reloads HA proxy when necessary. We have a reload delay configuration option, so if you have multiple changes in a short period of time, uh, you can set the reload delay so that the data plane API doesn't reload the HA proxy every time. Uh, it just reloads in that period when there have been changes in that period. Also, it uses runtime whenever it is apl applicable to change, to change the stuff in memory on the fly without reloading. Uh, we saw in a lot of presentations today that people have similar implementations of their own uh, of this mechanism, so it's quite standard as it seems. Also, the Data Plane API targets master worker processes so if you have a setup running in multi-process mode, uh, the data plane API will know, and it will target the stat sockets of each process. Or if you have master socket setup, it will communicate with child processes using the master socket. The Kubernetes ingress controller is our implementation of the ingress controller. Uh, it listens for events on the Kubernetes a API, and it reacts to those events by translating them into model structs and using client-native to change configuration. Also, as the data plane API, it tries to avoid reloads as much as possible using the runtime API. You can configure the Kubernetes ingress controller on multiple levels, the service objects, the ingress object, and the config map. So all of our projects have been open sourced and at our GitHub account, HA proxy tech. Uh, if you want to use those projects, feel free to create issues for possible feature requests, bug reports, or anything. We'll be happy to answer. And also, if you want to contribute, we'll guide you to the process. Uh, here is a simple example how you can contribute. Uh, by in this example, we're adding some fields to the server resource uh, in the data plane API. So first of all, you go to the config parser, check if it understands that fields and if it can parse it. You create a merge request there. You add them to the, our open API specification, generate the models package, uh, implement the logic in the client native package, and finally, you generate the data plane API project using the specification. It looks kind of complicated, but when you get into it, it's not. So that's all from me. Do you have any more questions? Any questions? Great. Thank you so much, Marco.